weekend truly and yesterday we had our fall festival um, and it was just an absolutely perfect day uh, to just love on our community and so we just want to say thanks to anybody who was a part of that on the serve team uh, just to make it possible but it was a beautiful day um, and we do have the winner of the trunk <laughs> get really excited about that um, there is there is it was a close race Actually, it wasn't, but I feel like I should say that. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, can I get a drum roll? All right. <laughs> For the second time in a year, Phil Miller with the Boneyard! <laughs> <laughs> now he has glitter all over him. Weird, okay. <laughs> He said he had a speech, but we said no. So, so now I need to say welcome to Grace Community. If you are new or you are visiting, we are so glad you are here. Don't judge us on the welcome, please. <laughs> um, but we want to connect with you. And so there's a couple ways that we make that possible, just so we can say hi and get to know you. And it's through our hello card. You can do that through a QR code. Um, also, if you use the link that in our Bible app, you can do that, or face-to-face -face out at the Disgrace, Discover Grace Wall. Um, but we just want to be able to connect and say hi. So, um, yeah, so welcome. Also, if you want to stop back there, there's a gift. So if this is your first time or if you've sat in the chairs a few, few weeks, um, we encourage you to stop back by the Discover Grace and get a gift um, and just connect with us. So today, we're having pizza with the pastor. Yeah. A cool, uh, a cool thing is um, we have this pastor who likes to text a lot, and he sat down. <laughs> he sat down last night, and he really wants to um, connect with everybody. And so he has nine new families and 36 people come into Pizza with the Pastor. Amen. 
But if you tell me 36, I'm going to order food for like 55. So, or 75. So if you um, did not sign up, it's okay. And you want to come and hear um, a little bit more about Grace and to meet the McLaughlin family, um, head down to the, the last room um, in the, um, this hallway, room 107, and have some pizza with us. So that's, that's happening today. Um, Grace Student Ministry is happening tonight. Doors open at 5.30. Uh, the, the night ends at 8, but they're continuing on uh, just teaching about truth, um, worship, games, all that good stuff. So uh, bring, your, bring your 6th through 12th graders out to Grace Student Ministry. Um, it's just been a beautiful, rich time there. So, all right. October has been crazy, like a good crazy. Um, and we are going to finish strong next, um, next week with Baptism Sunday. Can we get some pop? We should have saved the poppers for then. Right? We have served. We have um, just outreach. We have just been to church. And we are going to celebrate with baptisms. And so if we have people who can, um, you know, reach out to us. But if you were wanting to know more about baptism, what that decision is, what that um, means, um, I would encourage you, um, get with me. Oh, Jeremy, I totally forgot to introduce myself. Hi. Get with me. Jeremy's like, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sandy Chu, and I get to be the executive assistant at Grace Community. <laughs> I don't think I have a job on Monday. Um, <laughs> um, but reach out um, to me, talk to Jeremy, call the church office. And um, we would just love to, to talk to you about what baptism, if, if you're contemplating that, because we will have baptism Sunday next Sunday. And October is Pastor Appreciation Month. <laughs> um, I said this a couple weeks ago. Somebody along the way deemed October as, as that. But my prayer for grace is that we are a church who supports and encourages our leaders all year round. Um, yeah. In the New Testament, um, you see that. You see that. The letters that are written in the New Testament are to the people who are, are building the church and who are um, going and, and, and sharing Jesus' good news. And so um, we hope that that is just our hurt all the time. Um, but next Sunday, we are going to do a love offering for the McLaughlin family uh, just as a way to say thank you, to show our appreciation. So just know that that's coming up. But also there's a basket out there. Write them a note. Um, stop and get a gift card this week. Drop it in um, just to show um, how much we really do value his obedience to ministry. Because to me, that's, that's what that's about. It's, it's not because he would never want it to be about him. Rebecca would never want him to point to them. But that is, there's an obedience to ministry. And so I hope that we value that at Grace Community, and we are, we are appreciative of that. Um, I just want to tell you guys that um, getting to work with the pastor um, you have a pastor, and I said it, but I think we just need to hear it, because I've worked with a, a handful of, of pastors here, and I don't know how, you have a pastor who is never going to stop dreaming big for Jesus. Like, I've, I don't think complacency is in his vocabulary, which is a good thing, and I don't think Grace is ever going to get into a rut, because he's never going to stop dreaming, and I just want us to appreciate that. Yeah. He's hating this. But that's, no, no, don't do that. He won't, no. Yeah, but um, it is, it's just, uh, I just, I just want us to show love because ministry is hard. Because when you dream big, you get pushed back sometimes. And you, when you think outside the box, it's not status quo church. And I don't think we want Grace to be that. And so I just want you um, to encourage him and encourage their family. So we're going to worship. So will you stand with me, church? As we just center our hearts, will you just, will you just pray with me? Oh, God, we are so thankful uh, that you let us have awkward moments and you let us have laughter and joy and giggles. Um, that you allow us to come in and to center our hearts around what we need to center around, and it is you. Um, God, I'm so thankful for people that you didn't put us on this earth and we do not do this in isolation, but that we do this um, as a family and as a body of believers. Um, and so right now, my prayer um, is that we love well, that we worship well, that we serve well. Um, God, that you empty us of anything that is of us. And right now, um, you fill us with, with your goodness and, and your love. God, I pray for this worship team as they lead out. Um, God, that it is just pure. Um, I pray that when Jeremy brings the message, that we are challenged and we are encouraged to ask our why. 
and that it doesn't leave just or stay in this room. But when we leave and we go out, we are continually to ask ourselves why we follow you and why we do what we do. And God, we always want the answer to be you. We just do. I thank you for the people in this room. I hope they feel loved and welcomed. I hope that grace shows up and represents well today because that is what you've called us to do. God, it is in the name of Jesus that I ask all of this. Amen. All right, so I just, this is um, called Egypt, and I just want to thank God that he got me out of Egypt. So Egypt represents slavery, a slave to sin, a slave to whatever is drawing you in, drugs, addiction, whatever. And God is able to bring you out. He's able to do that, to put you back into the identity that he has for you. So just listen to the words as we sing this. You have told 
Jesus, that you've let us out. Jesus, that you promise perfect eternity with you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're breathing on us today. Thank you, Jesus, that we can worship you. Thank you, Jesus, that we can just be still and know that you are God. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
So whatever I'm feeling, you still got a reason to kind of feel when things start to try to to push their way back up. The enemy knows what to use against you. You know, he doesn't usually come up with new stuff. It's stuff that you've dealt with over in your past. And and so he tries to bring those things up because he knows that that was an issue for you. And so I've had these issues with, I'm not not blaming the devil. I'm not going to give him any more credit than he deserves because I think we do that too much. We give him way more credit than he deserves. You know, Um, I I chose, I chose to, to give in to anger. So over the last uh, few weeks, few months, um, Selena can attest to this. I kind of hope she doesn't, but um, she can attest to this, um, that I, I've just been, I don't know, in a funk. Um, and it's because I wasn't praising. Um, I wasn't being thankful. Um, I, haven't been in my, I haven't been in the Word in a while, long time. Um, I haven't been praying. Um, and so that song, you know, it, I still have a reason to praise, you know, there's always something to praise about, just the fact that the, the sun comes up in the morning, uh, that, that there's there's air to breathe, there's there's food on the table, you know, those are all reasons to praise, and I, and I forgot that, so I just, I just want to say right now that, Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I haven't, uh, that I haven't been praising you praising you like I should. Um, mm, that I haven't been humble. Um, that I haven't been thankful. But I know, I know that he forgives me. I know that there's nothing I can do that's ever going to separate him, have separate me from, from his love. Um, and I'm thankful for that. That is something else to be thankful. There's nothing we can do that's going to separate us from the love of God. So I just want to, as I sing this last song, just, just remember that there's nothing that that, uh, that we can do. And this this first line, Lord, I come, I confess. So if there's something that you need to, to lay down, there is freedom in confession. There is freedom in laying stuff down at the altar. Um, these altars, they're not, they're not magical, they're symbolic. But if there's uh, something that you just need to lay down and let go of, and uh, just do it. Thank you. 
just give ourselves to you, Lord. We just surrender and say it's all about you. It's all about you. And we just say yes to you. In Jesus' name. serve a big God this week as we were, um, oh, sorry, Phil. Yeah. Well, you distracted me earlier. There's still glitter down here. It's a shiny area. Go ahead. Sorry, I'll tell my story in a minute. Go. If you're a guest with us, we are so thankful that you're here. And uh, every week we pause to just remember how much God loves us and to remember what Jesus did. If you didn't grab a little cup, uh, they're in the back. And, and please don't hesitate to get up and go get that. And we invite you to participate with us. Jesus made a few statements about himself. And one of those statements that he made uh, about purpose is he said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. And we all were lost. And none of us were were perfect we all had fallen short and we all had sinned in fact if we're honest we all still do and that's one of the beautiful things about transparency and you just saw transparency up here and sometimes we're afraid of transparency because we're supposed to be mature in our walk and we've been walking so long and we're not supposed to and when mature believers like Doug are honest enough to be transparent with struggles. It helps some of us to go, I'm not alone. And so I thank you, Doug, for your transparency. And it means so much to the rest of us, and it helps us in our journey. But not all of us were lost at one point, and that's why Jesus came. One of my favorite reminders of how deep God loves each one of us is John 3, 16 and 17, where it says, for God so loves the world. And I, I don't want you to get lost in that world word. I want you to realize he's talking about us, you, me. God so loved you that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. One of the things I love about events like yesterday so many people came onto the, the property here and got to just be loved on in a fun way. And, and some who probably believe God 
couldn't love me. Or Jesus died, but probably not for me. And I love that verse because it says, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Man, we have a loving God. And one of the other statements Jesus made, he said, I came to seek and save the lost, but he also said, I came to serve and not be served. One of the greatest, the greatest example of service is what we remember right now, where Jesus chose to go to the cross, chose to allow his body to be broken and his blood to be shed to pay for our sins so that we could be made right with God. And so every week we pause just for a few moments to remember that amazing sacrifice that was for each one of us. So if you're a guest, to thank you for being here. And we invite you to participate in this special time with us. If you would, take your bread. The Lord Jesus in the night he is betrayed, and it says, took bread, and after he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your amazing love. That you were willing to send your son to this earth, that he was for the purpose of going to the cross willingly to pay for our sin, to make us right with you, to give us an eternal home. We thank you for loving us that much, and we pause right now to remember that sacrifice, but to say thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, I met a lady this week in the ice cream shop, and um, I don't know if you, uh, as you walk with the Lord, um, I make a lot of assumptions about things, and I assume that most people have been to church or, or most people know Jesus or most people know about God or most people, you know, just have grown up in Sunday school like I did. And, and I don't know. I just kind of make those assumptions. And, and it was kind of a, a slow day, and, and uh, when people come in and I'm there, I usually, there's about three hours there that sometimes I'm there from 11 to 2, and there was a gal, and she brought a girl in, and she had she had Down syndrome, and she was probably she was probably twenty, and the lady that brought her in was probably I don't know my age somewhere around there forty five, and and uh, we got talking, and so I started asking her some questions about group homes in town, and and um, you know people with special needs, what kind of services are there in town, and just strike up a conversation um, with people. I think that's why I'm there. And so we get talking and and she saw my cards. I've got cards up and Felix has got cards up in the in the shop there by, by the register and she said uh, um, is is one of these people you? And I said, "Yeah, I'm Jeremy." And she said, "Well, she said I've been to church one time in my life." And I said, "Once? Like you literally been one time?" She said, "Yeah, I marked it off my bucket list and and um <laughs> And she said, and that was, that was enough. And she said, when I went, she said, I didn't understand anything. I didn't get, I didn't understand anything. I took my daughter, and yeah, and we, we got it done. And I just always kind of wanted to go visit a place. And so we, we checked that off the, the bucket list. And we got talking a little bit more, and, and she started asking about um, services uh, at that, that we do. And I started telling her, and, and I said, we go into um, some assisted living facilities. And she said, oh. We've been looking for somebody to do um, uh, a church service in one of our, it's a group home that they bring everybody to. There's about 60 people. 
um, to, with special needs. And I said, oh, we would love to do that. So I gave her my card. I said, text me. She said, I will. Da, 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 da. And I said, when was the last time you were in church? Or the, the first time you went, when did you go? She said, oh, it was about eight years ago. And I said, well, I said, when you're bored one day and you want to try it again, and I said, and you got questions afterwards, I said, you come over to Grace Community 11 o'clock, and I said, we'll take you to lunch and explain anything you didn't understand. I want you to know today, if you're a guest with us and you don't understand something, ask. Um, we make a lot of assumptions about things, but I had a friend of mine, John Hansen, that said one time, he said, you know, it's kind of weird that we talk about Jesus living with inside of us. He said, if I was a non-believer and I didn't grow up in church, he said, that sounds weird. And I thought, oh, that does sound weird. And, uh, Braden, how you doing? I didn't see you down there. Good. I'm glad you're here. Give it up for Braden Sackett, would you? I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, again, if you're a guest with us today um, and you don't understand something, we'd, we'd be happy to, to answer any questions. As you can see, we love to worship the Lord. We love to praise. We love to sing. We love to do those things. We love to pray together um, because we, we believe that we know the one who has all the answers, and his name is Jesus. And uh, we believe that Jesus died on a cross for each one of us in this room. Uh, and if you've never experienced the joy of what we would call salvation, certainly we'd love to talk to you about that. Um, and then Jesus, just so you know, real quick, I'll give, you, I'll give you six years of Sunday school in 20 seconds. So then Jesus goes, dies on a cross, gets put in the tomb, comes back to life three days, that's Easter. And then he, he, goes, he goes to heaven, and then he sends his Holy Spirit to dwell within each one of us. Because Jesus is just one man, but his spirit can dwell within you and can speak to you and teach you and bring comfort to you and give you direction and purpose and all of those things I think we all crave in life and we've all looked through, looked for in a lot of different areas in our life with all kinds of different things. And none of them have given us uh, this, this thing that Jesus can give to us. Last week we started talking about... Um, Something called your why. What's your why? And we, I showed a video last week of a, of a comedian that had a question and answer session with a, a gentleman that was a music teacher that he had just found out he was a music teacher. And, and the comedian, Michael is his name, wanted to know if he could sing. And he said, hey, I want you to sing Amazing Grace. And so he just sang, you know, a pretty standard version of Amazing Grace. Then he says to this guy, hey, I want you to sing Amazing Grace like your uncle just got out of prison and, 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 and whatever. And I, I forget exactly, but he found the Lord and he's going to live this wonderful life and he found a job and, and you're just glad to put your arms around your uncle. I don't know exactly what the reason was. And he said, now I want you to sing it like you know that, but now I want you to sing Amazing Grace like that. And it completely changed his version of Amazing Grace because he didn't know exactly the, the what was still there, but he knew the why. Why am I singing this? Why am I going through life? Why do I get up every day and punch a time clock? Why do I try to do what's right in my life? Why do I do those things? And so we started looking at that last week, and I, I don't have a, a very long message again today, I don't think, but um, as, as I'm talking today, this is going to be very distracting, um, Brennan and, and Tate, could you come up, and I want you just to, um, I want you to come up here. Or just stand there. You're pastor. You're supposed to do what I say. <clears throat> that, that never works. I just want you to play this game. Just, just play it. Just don't be noisy. And don't knock it over. So there are some foundational verses I want to give you today. These are all in your Bible app. If you have the Bible app and you want to go to it, uh, and you want to go to events, uh, and you go to Grace Community. The scriptures are in there today. Um, but I, I want to read a couple of, of scriptures to you. And the first one is Matthew 7, 24 through 27. See, when you try to figure out and you rediscover what your why is, I hope for all of us in this room who love Jesus, the why is that we get up every day and do the things that we do because we want people to know who Jesus is. Like, that's our why. At the end of the day, that's our why. 
We want people to know who Christ is because we believe that we're going to live forever one of these days in a place either called heaven or a place that we call hell. And, and one, we're going to be with everybody that we know and we're going to be with God. And the other place, we're going to be separated from anything godly and we're not going to know anybody there. We're not going to even see people there. We're going to be alone and that's going to be, we refer to that as, as hell. Well, you know, my why is I want to reunite with all of you in heaven around, around the table, if you will, and eating with you and spending time with you and spend eternity with you. And so when I get up every day, that's what I want to be on my mind. And so there's a verse I want to read, and it's Matthew 7, 24 through 27, a few verses. It says this, anyone who listens to my teachings and follow follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rains come in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash, right? Did y'all hear that or are you just paying attention to them? I wonder how high you can get that, by the way. Can you get it as high as like yourselves? Keep going, let's see. I don't think you can. Um, we used to sing a song about this in Sunday school. Uh, the rains came and the floods. Do you all remember that song? I don't remember it right now, but we used to sing it. Um, I, when I watch the television and I watch a hurricane come in and I watch, especially in California, as mudslides happen, I think to myself, who is the goofball that built our house on the side of that hill? I mean, they knew this was going to come. They built it on a, in an area where the, the foundation wasn't very stable. And see, a lot of us in this room, as last week we started thinking about our why, why do we do what we do, all of a sudden we, we tried to remember what our why was. And we started remembering what it was. And then this week the enemy came and said, I don't need you to remember that. I need you to do this. And so what most of us do in this room is we are either all in or we're all out. There's really no middle ground for a lot of people in this room. But can I tell you that... That for you not to forget your why, you're going to have to do some really small things that seem pretty um, routine, but I think they're really important. I'm going to give you one. This isn't about Jesus, but this is about other things that we do. I had to develop a habit every morning of getting up and brushing my teeth. Okay? Amen? How many of you brushed your teeth today? Now look at your neighbor, and if they didn't, shame them right now. Just don't let them breathe on you. I didn't come out of the womb knowing how to brush my teeth, did I? No. My parents had to teach me to brush my teeth. They had to teach me when I, when I leave the house, I need my teeth brushed. If I don't leave the house, you need to brush your teeth. Why? Because if you don't brush your teeth, what happens? You get cavities. If you don't go to the dentist every six months and get your teeth cleaned, just trying not to get in trouble here, you will develop what is called plaque on your teeth, right? Some of you have that right now. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not to embarrass anybody, but get your tooth in your mouth. Then you have to go see somebody like my wife that's going to spend about three hours with you twice. Getting all of that off. And then she's going to send me pictures of the crap that she got off your teeth. (laughs) Oh, I've got them. I don't know who they're from, but I got them. Look what I did today. (laughs) Those folks did not develop this habit. She tells me the number of people that just come to the dentist office without their teeth brushed is disgusting. It's astronomical. People that don't brush their teeth before you go to the dentist. That's stupid. Somebody had to teach you this very elementary habit. Why do you do that? Because you want good teeth, right? It affects people. It affects you. Everything that happens in your mouth affects everything else in your body. Did you know that if you have a toothache today, you may be having a heart attack? It's all connected. Somebody needed to develop this habit. It didn't start with with you going to the den. It started with a very simple thing that you need to do every single day. Some of you in this room, how many of you put deodorant on? 
Good. Some of you have two hands up. I don't believe the ones with just one hand up. <laughs> Somebody had to develop, you had to develop this habit, right? And somewhere in junior high, your parents really made sure before you left the house, did you put your deodorant on? And unfortunately, a lot of people didn't have parents, and you walk into a junior high classroom, right, Stacy? And it smells because people still don't have this habit. This also doesn't necessarily affect you, but it affects everybody around you. And then we get to smell you, right? See, when you don't develop habits that are basic in your life, that are spiritual habits, you will forget your why quite often. Because your house is not built on a solid foundation. It is built on a wobbly card table, right? It is built on sinking sand, and it will not last. And then you will go six months, and all of a sudden you were in church, you were reading your Bible, you were praying every day, and all of a sudden you look around and none of that stuff is there. Why? Because you forgot it. You forgot your why. Because you're not doing the small things in your life. I'm not talking about you leading a Sunday school class. I'm talking about that you're in God's Word every day. I'm talking about that you spend time in prayer every day. I'm talking about that you go to church every week because, well, it's really important to be in that, in that, that the presence of God with a corporate group of people that all believe the same type of way. I want to read you a couple of, of things here. And I think this is really important, and this will um, strike some of you in, in different ways. Matthew 21, 42. Then Jesus asked them, didn't you ever read this in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected, excuse me, I can't say that word. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. So I had to look up the word cornerstone, because I know what a cornerstone is. I've seen them on buildings. Now they have nice little dates on it, on the building, on the cornerstone. A cornerstone is the first stone set in the construction of a masonry foundation. All other stones will be set in reference to this stone, thus determining the position of the entire structure. Amen? I'm going to read that again for those of you that forgot that you're in it. This is, I'm going to tell you again. I got pizza coming in four minutes, and I need you to preach along with me so we can go eat. The cornerstone. Okay, this is the cornerstone of the whole building. Is the first stone set in the construction of a masonry foundation. All other stones will be set in reference to that one stone. So that one stone needs to make sure that it is straight with where you're headed. Because if it's not straight, you're going to have a crooked foundation. Amen? You're going to have a crooked building. You're going to have a a, a building with cracks in it. You're going to have a building where the wind can get in. Amen? You're going to have a building where you go somewhere and all of a sudden there's a, there's a crack in maybe the ceiling or there's a crack in the foundation because you didn't take the time to set your cornerstone. Right? Does that make sense? So Rebecca and I have, and, and my parents, and uh, I think that's it, that's here, and, and my kids have been to Panama, and we have built a church building there. And I wasn't there when they laid the very first stone, but I'm just going to tell you they do things a little bit differently there. The cornerstone on that building, although it's a nice-looking building, if you look very close, it's not very set and straight. They built that on top of a sewer, okay? And and my guess is over time it's probably going to settle a little bit, and there's probably going to be a little bit. There's nothing that's even in that whole building. Matter of fact, if you look at this building and you just look from here to there, you can see that it's about three inches off. I don't know. Maybe they didn't get the cornerstone set right. I don't want my life to be off. I don't want the wind to come in. I don't want the rains to come in. I don't want the enemy to get a foothold. Can I tell you right now that the enemy is roaming around like a lion trying to find the weakest link in in this place and in other places, looking to see where he can get a little bit of wind in, looking to see where he can get a little bit of rain in. Amen? That's what's happening. Whose turn is it? So Jesus calls himself the what? 
the cornerstone. Jesus calls himself the cornerstone. You get all your cornerstone habits right here. Can I tell you this? When Jesus calls himself the cornerstone, what he's talking about, again, is everything in your life needs to be set in, in the direction that I have you. You, you need to lay every, fa- every stone from me, from me. The way you spend your finances, the way you spend your time, the way you treat people, the way that you talk to people, the way that, that, that you determine the priorities in your life. That's what I'm asking you to do. And habits aren't great destinations you arrive at at one day. They are tiny steps that you take every single day. Some of the most important small wins you can make are called keystone habits. Brushing your teeth is one. Putting on your deodorant. Taking vitamins. I've got a list here that I made up. Taking a walk. Amen? Taking a walk. Some of you in this room are like me, and now you want to lose 40 pounds, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm signing up for that half marathon. I'm doing it. Next week I saw it on Facebook. I'm doing it. And what happens is, is you make it 200 yards, you collapse, and you're like, well, I tried. You didn't, you, you didn't set your cornerstone very well. You build it on a wobbly foundation. Um, family traditions, making your bed in the morning. I'm talking about small habits. See, the reason, again, that we forget who we are and we forget our why is because we're not doing the small things in our lives that I believe that we're called to do. So, I want to list real quick, list of cornerstone habits. And keep in mind that we're talking about your why today, okay? These are some cornerstone habits. Number one, you want to wake up early enough to start your day with Jesus. Some of you are going to have to develop a habit in that. So I don't know what that looks like for you. (laughs) This is getting good. Some of you don't have to get up at 5 in the morning. Some of you will. You need to get up a half an hour earlier to spend some time with the Lord. Number two, sleep at least 7 to 8 hours a night. What's so funny about that? How many hours do you sleep? Well, maybe you need to go to bed earlier, Lauren. And don't blame your child. No, that doesn't work for me. No, don't be pointing. People do that. Well, the so-and-so didn't sleep. Close the door and let them cry. (laughs) Parenting 101. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I get my eight hours of sleep. Why? Because I have to go to bed earlier. I mean, not why. I go to bed earlier. Why? Because I don't want to be cranky the next day. Some of you are cranky Christians. One of the reasons is is because you just don't get enough sleep. And not to pick on Lauren, but she laughed and she shouldn't have, so now she's the subject of my sermon. You can come up with all kinds of excuses. Lauren. You can come up with all kinds of them, and none of them are any good. And I'll give you an example. So Rebecca, what Rebecca used to do, she doesn't anymore because she just gets up early, and, but she would get up to make our kids lunch the night before so she could sleep in a little bit more. Does that make sense? Like there are things that like you can do the day before. You can get your kids' clothes ready. I mean, because she knew she needed the sleep. And then what she could do is she could set her alarm a half an hour earlier, and instead of doing those things, what did she do? She opened up her Bible. She spent time with the Lord. And, and, and I think that's really important. That's just a cornerstone habit. Eat at least one meal together with your family every single day. At least one meal. Make it happen. I know you all have football. I know you have soccer. I know you have baseball. I know you have recitals. I get all that. We've got the same things. Figure it out. It's really important. One of these days, your children will all be gone. Amen? They'll all be off doing other things, and you will wish that you set that cornerstone habit. And if you set that habit with your children, then your children will also have that habit of eating together. Attend a local church weekly. Participate by giving, by getting involved in the life group, and then serving. Again, one of our core values here is we don't want to just be consumers. We want to be contributors. We love to be contributors. We love to serve at an event. We love to sing on the praise team. We love to fold bulletins. We love to, to, uh, to serve our neighbor. We love to do those things. It's part of our culture, and we continue to get better at it, but it's a cornerstone habit. Exercise at least three times a week for 30 minutes. Declare some truths about yourself every day. Jeremy, you were created in the image of God. Because the devil's going to tell you that you are worthless and you're not worth anything. 
Amen? So he's telling you some of, the, of you that right now. You've got issues in your life, and you're like, well, I've screwed it all up. Yeah, I totally get that. Totally understand it. And maybe you have. But I'm going to tell you that God hasn't forgotten you, and you need to declare some truths about yourself. Jesus died on a cross for you. You were created in the image of God. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You mess it up, I totally get it. You're going to mess it up. But if your house is built on a foundation that is full of Jesus, can I tell you that you can get right back up, and the Lord will pull you back up, and he will set you straight again, and you will continue to build. Amen? Look to Jesus first rather than Google. I made that one up on my own. <laughs> Look to Jesus first rather than Google. Oh, you know, just Google it. Well, no, don't Google it. Talk to the Lord about it. You know, Cabot, you know, I've got a sniffle and I'm going to die. Don't Google it. Sorry, babe. I do love you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, he can really tell. Um, I got three more and then I'm done. Thank God every day first in your prayers. That needs to become a habit. We go to Jesus like he's a genie. Jesus taught the disciples to give thanks, to give praise first. Do that. Number nine, practice this. If you have an issue with someone, either go to them Jesus, or keep your mouth shut. Ooh. Oh, you didn't hear that. This, isn't, this is just a biblical, this is a biblical principle, by the way. Practice this. If you have an issue with someone, either go to them, Jesus, or keep your mouth shut. Again, the Bible talks about that. We're going to talk about this at some point, you know, in our tongue. Our tongue is, is like fire. It gets us in trouble. And what we'd rather do is tell everybody else the problems that we have with people, and then we want to forget why the, and then we can't re- figure out why the joy is gone in our lives. The joy is, be- is gone because, again, you're just not following biblical principle. We've all done it wrong. I, okay, we've all done it wrong. This isn't me casting stones. Gosh, I've done it wrong I don't know how many times. I'm just telling you that to, to develop that principle, though, and to not forget your why and to set this on a cornerstone, you're going to have to practice this biblical principle. you got a problem with somebody? Go and talk to them about it. Amen? And number, and number 10, practice being a positive person by encouraging at least one person every day. I want to close with this scripture, and, it's, and I don't have it written down. I've got to, it's Matthew 6, 33. Oh, how's this one work? <clears throat> Who was that? Oh, that was, <laughs> I thought that was Lauren trying to like, curry favor or something, you know. (laughs) Here it is. Matthew 6.33. Seek what first? Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Set him as your cornerstone. Uh, Merle has built 1,800 houses. That's ridiculous, by the way. He's 80 and he's still building them. Some of you probably live in a home that he's built and you don't even know it. My guess is if I would have ch- chatted with him and brought him up here and interviewed him, he could have given us some more principles on a foundation that you have to have for a home to last. My friends, the only way that I know for your home, your temple, this, to last, is for you to build your house on a relationship with Jesus. If you build it on anything else, it it will not last. It will fall. I cannot believe it's taken you this long for this. Matthew 6. Do we have a closing song? Sure we do. Come on up. Yeah, we do. Come on up. Matthew 6.33. I'm going to read it one more time. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. After we're done today... And I should have probably had people at the back with these, but you can come up and get these. These are just little Jenga things. And it's Matthew 21, 42. And this is the, the very first scripture that I read to you today. And it, I want to remind you what it is. It's this. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. 
These all say Matthew 21, 42. I want you to take this and I want you to write another scripture on the back that's meaningful to you. And then I want you to keep this somewhere. That you remember every single day to make Christ the cornerstone of your life. To put Christ first in your life. And realizing that everything else will be added. Everything else will be given to you that you need to further a relationship with him. But you've got to make him the cornerstone. It's got to be built on a foundation. Seriously, just pull the bottom one so we can get this done. (laughs) Now they're really, oh. You can't do that one. Now we're going to start an argument. These two are like cranky old women and men. It's hysterical. Go ahead. Well, you got to go to the bottom. You, it's the foundation message, so you got to pull these bottom two. And if that drops and it stays standing, it's... Let's stand together and sing something today. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Come on up and grab everything these. around me is shaking. Come on up and grab these. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful generations so why would he fail now he won't
those bits of you. I'm safe with you. I'm going to make it through. Rain came with blue, but my house was built on you. Yeah. I'm safe with you. I'm going to make it through.